The new update to Reaper, Reaper 7 is out now. And in this video, I'm gonna go over my top five favorite new features from the update. There's a bunch of new features and fixes, just having a look at the ones that I think are gonna be the most helpful to the most people. Existing users can download this version for free, free to update. New users, you still get that 60 day free trial and it's still only $60 to buy outright. I'm using version 7.02. Let's have a look at the top five features. So right off the bat, when you load up Reaper, you'll notice that everything's got a little bit of a, a polish. The user interface has been updated slightly, nothing too drastic that you won't be able to find your most used features. You'll notice that th the buttons and things have got a slightly more tactile look. And you've got these little icons here that make it more clear which track is active. And if you click on an item, you can see them on there as well. One useful feature of the user interface I've found is the way that you can minimize your folder tracks. So you click the icon here, as usual, any item, any tracks in that folder will be minimized. If we go to options, preferences, track control panels, you can now change how they're displayed when you do collapse your folder tracks. So small collapsed, we can change it to normal hidden, and then by default, it's going to hide anything. And, and you've got a lot of customization over, over that and your layouts as usual. Reaper has always been highly customizable. And the second feature that stands out to me is the visual track spaces. So if you right click on any of your tracks, you can now add a visual spacer, insert before or after or before and after. And then we've just got this little gap helps keep things tidy. And it reminds me of physical racks of hardware that you get where you can where you can have a physical spacer just to keep things tidy. By far the most useful new feature in Reaper 7 though is the way that it now handles takes, lanes and comping. You've got this new option called lanes which allows you to recall multiple takes and organize them and compose them in a different way. So if we just get rid of these tracks for now just so it's clearer we've got our host track there. Let's say we're going to record a podcast intro. So I'm going to click record on there to arm it and mute that. And then let's hit record and, and do a take. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Just something as an example. So we've got our take there. Before, if you wanted to record another take, you would have to record it on a separate track or record it on top of that one and then sort of cut and paste and, and move things around to create your final composition. Now we have something called lanes. So if you right click the track, you've got a couple of options here. Free item positioning lets you move that about the track and increase or decrease the size. But if we go on to fixed item lanes, we've got another little marked out track there and you can move things on to a new lane and then record another take. So if we do another take there, hello and welcome to the podcast. And it's going to record another version below and then we can do another one. Hello and welcome to the podcast. And then it's going to create a take for each of those. And we can listen to these one at a time using these solo buttons here. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Hello and welcome to the podcast. And, and let's, let's just, just do, do one more for good measure. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Or if we highlight all of these, hold control and click them all or command. Hello, Hello and, and welcome and to the well Obviously, obviously that, that sounds, sounds horrendous, horrendous but, but you can see how that would be useful to listen to them all. At the same time, if you were recording exactly the same thing, like if you're recording a guitar take or something. But now what we can do is if we right click this column where the lanes are and click comp into empty new lane, we've got this composition track at the top and it automatically, if you see the cursor, it's changed to a highlighter. So now what we can do is use swipe comping, which is how they describe it. And we can swipe over the different sections Let's just turn off locking that we do want to use. So if we had this one and then the end of this one, 
Hello and welcome to the podcast. Or if we don't like that, that peppy hello, we can uh, pick a different one there. Swipe over that one. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Maybe the end of that is a bit too slow. Go for a faster ending like that one. Hello and welcome to the podcast. The podcast. We can get rid of that if we don't want it. And then you've got a comp. It's so easy to edit. It's so easy to put together. And then there's a bunch of other options. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail in this video. We're just sort of doing a top level overview of the of the top features. You can change the names of the tracks and how they act. But then what we can do is turn off comping. And if we right click on, on the main track again and turn off fixed item lanes, then we're left with just that comped version. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I love this feature and if you know Pro Tools, the playlists option, it's a really good alternative to that. And then feature number four that I'm really happy to see, another thing that I use in Pro Tools but Reaper hadn't picked it up yet. If you right click a track and go down to meters, you can display gain reduction for plugins that support it. So any gain reduction based plugins built into Reaper and certain other third party ones, we've already got a a compressor on there so if we press play now hello and welcome to the podcast you'll see that that gain reduction that yellow meter hello and welcome to the podcast is showing without us having to open and, and see obviously you can hear the gain reduction uh, but it's nice to have that visual reference as well and while we're on the topic of effects let's look at the fifth and final feature that we're looking at in this video so if you open up your effects menu and we've got a gate, an EQ and a compressor there. We now have a new way of organizing plugins. So if you right click on this empty space, you can add a container and you can add plugins into there. But what we can do is if we, if we get rid of that, the plugins we've already got there, the gate, EQ and compressor, we can move these into a container. And it's just a way of organizing your plugins. So now we can turn all of these off at once we can rename the container so uh, eq and dynamics for example i could call that and another thing you can do is adjust how much of those plugins that are that within that container are affecting the audio signal as a whole so it saves time you can use it in your automations as well and it just gives you a lot more control which is kind of a running theme of this update more control and ways to speed up your workflow there are a bunch of other features and fixes in reaper 7 i'll leave a link in the description below to a rundown of all of them and where you can download reaper 7 and there are a bunch of other videos already on youtube that go deep into how to how to use these particular features or you can just dive in and try them out for yourself it does take some practice getting used to any new door update and i think in particular with reaper it's a daw that relies is quite heavily on big menus of items and it can take a little while to, to sort of figure out where everything is and how to get the best out of everything but just remember you don't need to use all of these features if you don't need them all just use the ones that are going to be useful to you and let me know in the comments section below have you downloaded reaper 7 what's your favorite new feature and for more tips and guides on digital audio workstations and podcast production hit that subscribe button and as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.